Legion Season 2 Episode 8 Thoughts. This episode is called Chapter 16. Another episode of Love. Spoilers for everything X-Men leading up to and including this episode. The episode is rated TVMA, so will this video be let's dive right in. So when when David talks to Sid, she points out that it sounds distinctly like they had a fight, David and future Sid. And she asks, should I be mad at you? I share the writers and Sid's glee at how much they're getting out of the fact that David's love is communicating with him from the future because this is this is glorious it's the gift that keeps on giving and yeah um great bit when when David is like planning out you know the the yeah the mission getting Farouk's body you know, at one point he flips off Farouk, and another he like blows him up with his mind. At one point he eats the the yeah, and the let's see, yeah, this is gonna be somewhat nonlinear. I quite appreciate seeing the the origin of Fukuyama. You know, him at age seventeen being recruited for this and just like such a messed up image love it when you know after yeah we see the operation they're like sticking stuff in his brain and after there's like you know computer wires sticking out just yeah and then we see the <laughs> according to the subtitle she's known as the shush woman or shush lady something like that uh let's see if um Hush Woman, that's it, played by Sloane Robinson, and apparently she was a nurse, you know, helping him, you know, while he was recovering, and now, you know, she is in his mind, his, his memory, and yeah, Tonami seeing that whole thing, and then he manages to find the monk, you know, he hacked the mainframe, the mainframe hacked him back, now he's inside, and Tonami gets the, the information, and so he takes over one of the Vermilion, and, and yeah, just fantastic interaction you know, with, with David. It goes, sits down in front of David, and David's like, yeah, you know, what, what are we doing here? Because, you know, he's been face-to-face -face with Vermilion before. Usually, you know, Vermilion talk to him and, and tell him what is, is you know... And the, the um, yeah, I love the bit of, you know, at, at first he, of course, doesn't believe that that's Tonami. I was expecting them to do one of those things where the character proves that they are them by saying something only they would know. But, yeah, he's a, you know, David asks, are you alive in there? And Tonami, you know, defines his current existence and asks, Am I alive? You know, is that, you know, by by some definitions, yes, you know, your mind is still in there, your your body is dead, you know, yeah, depends on, depends on your definition. Uh, let's see, great converse, right, uh, uh, yeah, love when, when um, David talks to Lenny, and we get that little thing, you know, she, she, puts a, a strand of hair in you know, b between her lips and you know there's there's like this awkward pause and she's like do I have huffing in my mouth I, I mean what why are you staring at me like that and, and he points out oh you know my Amy used to do that which I believe we've seen her do that in an earlier episode so a nice bit of and and yeah you know that is like is is that muscle memory is that a thing that like you know so so seemingly some of Amy is still in there and you know I appreciate Lenny saying you know I didn't ask for this I I'm not 
you know, I didn't know that he was going to take Amy's body. Yes, I was asking to get out, but... And the... Um, let's see, you have the thing... It, yeah, yeah, she's like, tell me I'm really here. Tell me I'm not still inside, still trapped inside with him, you know. And... Let's see, yeah, uh, great conversation, yeah, um... David goes around and inspires, you know, plants ideas in the various minds and, you know, this won't hurt a bit. And Clark, yeah, with Sid, he actually does drop a, a note, you know, and, and yeah, she so she talks to, to Clark and, you know, there's the thing, you know, has he ever left before? Officially? Off the record. Girl talk. Which is, yeah, I mean, the that's not for, for me to judge or whatever. I, I am aware that there are some gay men who, yeah, when they're with, when they're around women, they, you know, oh, I'm one of the girls, you know. But that's a, yeah. And, and you know, this thing of, yeah, the, the, there was this boy in the army who kept jumping out of planes to get away from me. And one day his chute didn't open. You know, that's, yeah, you know, must really weigh on on Clark. And let's see, then we have the, um, yeah. Um, I really love Sid arriving. You know, there's, you know, there's the roar of a jet and we see it fly out, you know, through the, the frame. And then, you know, out comes someone in a parachute off with the the various you know walks up and and like hits him on like the shoulder and kicks him kicks his shin and such you know because she's you know she's upset with him he you know this is ex like this is literally like 100 percent what he said he wouldn't do you know he said that he wouldn't leave again and he's like i left you a note it said i love you you know just yeah you know. <laughs> sometimes we really are clueless uh, us men when dealing with with women and trying to be sensitive and the I love the bit where like so Farouk is on his way to the body you know also a great scene with the driver I love the detail that you know she says oh I miss this driving radio on windows down you know that is there are a lot of elderly people they really miss being able to do what they did when they were younger and i think it's important that we do as much as we can to make sure that they don't feel like there's nothing left for them you know to to make sure that they have something that they feel give their life lives meaning you know, it's not the case for everyone, but there are a number of seniors who feel like, you know, now that they don't have, you know, especially once they're in, like, a home, you know, not their home, but an old folks' home, and the, but, but yeah, yeah, um, Farouk is headed to the, and it, it really, it is just the, the picture of, like, French colonialism, this, you know, powerful man telling this this young person who's already like struggling you know out, out, out of breath kind of thing and I'm saying no keep going keep going you know I love the the comic panels you know the screen is separated into them and some of them you know at one point Farouk and Oliver in in the car you know, there's a panel, and it moves across the screen at the speed that the the young man is is you know carrying the the wagon with the the two of them. Beautifully done. Um, yeah, it, there's a right way and a wrong way to do that kind of thing. I would argue Hulk 2003 did it the wrong way. This is definitely the right way. And right, uh, so messed up when the the um, um, yeah, Sid, Sid and David get into the tent, you know, to get out of the storm, and they immediately find them as skeletons, and, you know, within a few seconds, it does it again, you know, they, they come back in, so it's, yeah, 
and and then we have the thing of you know they they end up in roughly the same position as the skeletons are so it's this thing of you know they don't find a solution to this they're literally going to die just like this um let's see yeah we we've seen melanie you know yeah um toke a bit recently you know and and now we see that this seemingly lowered her defenses enough that Oliver, at Farouk's behest, was able to to slip in and get her. You know, she she knocks out Clark, beautifully done with the rewinding because we don't really need to see yet, at least in this episode, what exactly happens after. Because the fact that she manages to knock him out as he's headed to carry out David's plan shows you know Farouk knew that David wouldn't go alone, and. Yeah, you know, we hear the, the um, you know, bring back my Bonnie to me, to me, you know, in, in Oliver's voice. Although, considering the, the exact circumstance, I feel that they really should have changed the lyrics to my bong hit, you know, a spleef, a spleef. Anyway, yes, um, right, I love that, you know, F, yeah, Clark and, and Sid have the conversation, and then it reveals... Melanie was listening in to, to the whole thing. I think every every movie and TV show should have at least one scene where two people have a dramatic conversation and then the camera reveals, you know, someone was listening the whole time. I think that is everything that I had for this. Right, uh, Lenny's escape was also quite nicely done. Um... And, and, yeah, you know, as soon as that door opens, she just, she's out of there. I think that is all that. Right, I like the little awkward look between Carrie and Clark. You know, the, when they, yeah, after David plants the idea, there's like, what was that? You know, just, yeah, nice little moment um yeah i'm gonna try to do the next episode tomorrow and i'll just close on i love the idea of hiding something by having geography change you know they actually like oh right Wow, I'm glad I, yeah, real quick, I I can't believe I neglected to mention in the episode, the video I did on the last, yeah, the episode before this one, I love that specifically the thing, the delusion that almost ruins everything involves cannibalism because, you know, and they talk about, you know, moral panic because that is, like, Cannibalism is one of those things, it's not that it's never happened, but it is vastly over-reported. There's a, a lot of cases throughout human history where, you know, one group of people wanted to spread hatred towards, you know, for, yeah, for another group of people, and cannibalism was something they claimed without any evidence because cannibalism is one of those things that's almost impossible to forgive like to be clear if you know you are like starving to death and someone has already died and you eat their their body to to stay alive a little bit longer you know under those circumstances one can understand but when people allege cannibalism, they are usually saying this group of people kill each other and then eat, even though there's alternatives. They, there's plenty of food, but they want to eat each other. You know, that, that's, it feels like, you know, oh, that, that's something like an animal would do, you know, no, no human being would do that, and suddenly, 
you know, you can justify all kinds of atrocities because, I mean, who would eat people? You know, the it's the it's the twist of at least one very famous movie, and the the yeah, um, you know the, the the thing with cannibalism, the flavor varies from person to person. Right, that was one thing for the last episode. Another, yes, another thing I would say for this episode, I loved the whole thing of using the allegory of the cave, Plato's allegory of the cave, to explore the dehumanizing effect of how today we experience, you know, so much through screens, you know. And I'm not saying I'm immune. I'm on your screen right now, you know, reading... IMDb stuff off one of my screens so but but it is true it can you know you can end up distorting reality you know the great how she you know she she holds up the phone she's gonna take a, a picture of a, of a chicken and it ends up a picture of a, of a duck instead and they argue and you know yeah they they start you know, for, yeah. First, the the you know this this young woman is you know insults her friend, you know, ending a friendship, and then we have this thing of of this woman pointing out, you know, the wage gap is not a joke; it's a crime. And then this person insulting her instead of engaging with what she's saying, and yeah. You know, I, I love the image. There's this one short sequence where a bunch of people are walking past each other, seemingly not noticing each other, and everyone's head is a speech bubble with a dot, dot, dot. You know, everyone is, is writing some, posting something. You know, beautifully done. Just, I guess, texting? I don't know, whatever. You know, writing something for, for yeah. And... Yeah, the the what, what did they say? The delusion of a narcissist, you know. No, nobody else matters. Everyone is a shadow on the wall. Let's see. And um, right. So some IMDb trivia. Um, huh. Oliver's poem is the opening lines of Allen Ginsberg's America. And yeah, and and yeah, someone pointed out, you know, the hearse driver. When talking to Farouk, mentions the professor, of course, Xavier. Right, and the yeah, I'm just gonna read someone. It, I guess this is a direct quote, but don't quote me on that. The cave parable is a variation of one of Plato's that. What if people are chained facing the back of the cave and you broke loose to see the outside, the sun? You run back to everyone to try to explain what you see outside the cave. What will people say? Will they believe your word of something outside the cave, which you have no words to explain what you saw, telling the ignorant that there is more to the world than the shadows on the back of a wall will fall on deaf ears? <laughs> 